Hi there, Release Fire here. So I'm going to show you how to make a moving platform in Dreams PS4. However, as you can see on the screen, not all moving platforms are created equal and there are ways to make incredibly cool moving platforms that go way beyond what you can currently see. For example, this moving platform that's a whole lot more like your kind of standard Mario moving platform and I'm going to show you how to animate to be able to make this pretty easily yourself. Hopefully the video is going to help you out. If it does, drop me a like below, but I'm going to start off with the simple stuff and then move on through all the various options you've got, building in complexity towards the end. But the simplest way to make a platform move is simply to throw in one of these rotators, which are relatively easy. You can see the motion that it turns in by pressing on it with X, and you can change that by moving this around. You just grab it with R2, and twist it around. You can put snap to grid on. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit to make that a little bit more kind of specific. Um, but then to be able to get a rotator, you go into gadgets and then you go into movers and outputs and you can find rotator here. It's relatively easy. You just stamp it on with R2 once you've selected it and you can twist it around and make it kind of play around quite easily like I showed you a little bit earlier. But then the other thing that you can do is throw in a piston, which is surprisingly not in movers and outputs, but in connectors a little bit over to the right hand side. And then you get one of these. When you select it, you drop the first node, which is yellow onto the object that you don't want to move. And then you connect the blue node onto the object that you do want to move. And then you can play around with all these settings, which you can get to by clicking R1 and square when you're hovering over the piston. You can change the speed of it, you can change the distance that it travels, you can change all sorts of different things that make it a little bit cooler but it still doesn't do everything that you want it to do. For example, it's linked to another object so if I just want it to move side to side between nothing and nothing then it's not going to get the job done unless I throw in some invisible objects either side of it which is a bit convoluted and the better way to do it is to actually animate this block to move side to side. But before you do that, it's good to engage some of the guides. For example, the grid snap, which will allow you to move these objects in a way that doesn't mean they're just floating all over the place. It just makes it a little bit easier for you to control where you're moving to because it will be snapping to a grid. And once you've got that in place, you want to go into animate and select a keyframe and drop it close to the block that you want to move. You can see that the record function is on over to the right hand side so that when you move this object and then press stop record, it will bank that placement. Now it doesn't record the entire process of the movement, it just stores the place that you've placed it. And then you can transition to the next movement in a smooth way, which I will show you how to do in a little bit. And the start of that process is to go into animate and then to choose timeline, which is just to the right of the, uh, of the keyframe, and then drop it in close to your first keyframe or close to the block that you want to move. And this is where you're gonna build out your animations. So you then dig into the detail of the timeline by holding L1 and pressing X while hovering over it. And that will bring up this entire block of timeline, which you're gonna expand and contract by grabbing it with X and moving the end of it to the left and to the right. Once you're happy with the size of it, you can then place the keyframe into it. And that will be the starting point for your animation. Move it over as far as you can to the left hand side until it snaps in place and then place it with either R2 or X and then you can increase the size of it to give it a pause state when it gets to this position by pressing up and down while hovering over it. Next up you're going to throw in another keyframe just to the right hand side of the first one around about with a second delay. However, you might want to play around with this later on if you want to make the animation a little bit slower. You just move everything over to the right hand side and again as soon as you place it in you get the record function which will record where you drop it after you press stop recording. However, if you kind of place it in a place that you're not happy with and you're not sure what to do, you can still move it or you can press back up by pressing the left directional button and then you just need to move it on over until you're happy with the placement and then record that by pressing stop recording. Head back on up to your timeline and then with your new keyframe, increase its size so it's similar to the first one and then you're going to put in a smooth transition and you do that by pressing L1 and pressing X while you're hovering in between the two keyframes. 
This will essentially give you a smooth transition between the two in a linear state. There are a few different kinds of transitions between keyframes and I'll kind of show you those a little bit later on but for now just stick with linear it's the easiest option to go with and then you just want to clone the first keyframe by holding L1 and pressing R2 on it and then moving it on over to the third point and suddenly you've got three transitions all the way across and that will give you all of your animation and there's just a little few steps to go to be able to smooth that out so that it loops quite nicely back and forwards. And the first of the steps is to click on the final keyframe and you want to keep the changes for that keyframe. So just click on that and you can see the different states for the blending types above. So you can see linear there and you've got ease in and there's lots of different options but honestly linear is just the easiest thing to do for now and it should be enough to get you started with making moving platforms. If you think the platform is moving too fast, then you just need to spread it out a bit. So spread out your animations in an even way, and that way when you play it again, it'll move at a little bit of a slower pace, and you can play around with that until you get it to a point that it works well within your level. And then once you've got it working well, you then want to loop it all together. So open up the details by pressing L1 and square and then change it from sustain, which will just keep the animation going and going as it is, as opposed to once, which will just do it once. You want to choose this one, loop, which will just loop it all together. However, that doesn't quite fix it because you kind of get this kind of gap at the end, which you can see where it just pauses for too long. So I'm going to fix that now. And once that's complete, that will show you how to make an animated moving level. And to do that, you just want to reduce the size of the end keyframe by pressing down until it's at its smallest point and then reduce the size of the timeline to the end of that point. And suddenly what you've got is a perfectly moving side to side moving platform. Now you might need to move some of the other objects in your level to make this work and then you might want to slow your animation down by moving that all over a bit until it's at a pace that allows your character to actually make it across without just falling off like a crazy person but that should get you started on the simple animation and now we're going to move on to how to do the complex animation that I showed you right at the beginning of the video. Now there is a simple way to do this kind of stuff but it doesn't work as well and it's essentially you use this action recorder that instead of recording points of animation it records your entire movement. So you can see I've got snap to grid on which gives it this stepped motion but even if I didn't have that you'd still have kind of a jagged movement. It wouldn't be incredibly smooth and you'd have to like train yourself to practice and just be super smooth in your movements. Maybe using the PlayStation Move controllers would make this a little bit easier but that is definitely not a smooth Mario like moving platform that I showed you at the beginning of this video. So I'm going to take you through everything that you need to do to make that happen now and the starting point for this is to set down markers to show the progression of the movement. So I'm going to essentially use platforms that I'm going to shrink down to tiny tiny scales so they're just about visible and I'm going to use those as markers to lay down the path all the way down from this platform on the left down to the platform by the goal on the right hand side. So this doesn't need to be perfect and you don't need loads and loads of them. In fact, for the distance like this, you probably only need three or four, but just place them in in equal positions and these will be your places for the animations or the movement of keyframes. And so to start that process off, you throw in a timeline much as you did earlier on and then we're going to start putting in keyframes for the different phases of movement. So essentially the first movement is going to be where the first marker is. Now I go on to fix this a little bit later on, but actually you need a keyframe for the very first position. But I go on to fix that a little bit later on to show you exactly how that works. So you essentially grab the platform that you want to move, put it into the first position where the marker is and set stop recording. And that gives you your first keyframe animation. And then you want to repeat that process a number of times until you get down to the bottom. So to do that, you just throw in another keyframe, do the second movement to the second position you put down for the markers. And what you'll end up with is something like this, which you can see the trailing line leading all the way down. But then what you've got to do is track that backwards. And to do that simply, you just copy or clone the objects backwards. So you go to the one back one from the end point and then you clone it over. 
And then for the last one, once you've got the entire down to the bottom, back up again, motion in place, you want to set it to keep changes as you did the last time. Bring in the side of the timeline and add in, if you didn't already, the first position of a keyframe, which is where the platform starts. And as soon as you've done this, what you've got is the entire journey from the very beginning of the movement all the way down to the bottom and then back up again. You've set it to not end. You then need to set it to loop and then you just need to space things around so that the movement looks as fluid as possible. You can also give the first keyframe a pause state by increasing the size of it with the up directional key, which means it'll pause when you first got a chance to jump on it. And then like I said earlier, just sort of move things around where you think the movement isn't as fluid as it can be. So that what you've got is a really nice transition. And then again, at the end, the middle state, you can increase the size of it so it pauses at the bottom and pauses at the top just nicely so that your character can jump on it, ride all the way down, jump off and get to the goal. And that is how to make a great moving platform here in Dreams on the PS4. Hopefully the video helps you out. Like I said earlier, if it does, drop me a like below. You can also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already with the links on the left hand side and hit that bell button if you want to get notifications for all of my videos as they come out. You can see the rest of my guide on dreams on the PS4 with the links on the right hand side. Leave any comments, let me know if there's anything you want me to show you how to do and I will catch you next time.